Uh, okay, so today is uh, Tuesday, February 15th, uh, 2022. It is 5.36 p.m. and this is the Public Safety Committee. Um, we, have, uh, we have an agenda um, that, was, that is listed on board docs. You'll forgive me, I'm sort of on a couple of different screens. Um, the first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Um, before somebody makes a motion on that, I would just I would just ask that um, we uh, that we add to the agenda um, that we add to the agenda just um, like four point four point uh, four point zero five or zero zero five. Um, just an item before we get to the discussion of the CNA report, there was something I just wanted to ask the committee members about before going forward. Um, other than that, if there's, um, and that would be just a discussion about um, the tapes, um, the recordings that we've had so far of these CNA meetings and posting them on board docs. I didn't want to, didn't want to didn't want to make that decision without um, both of you being able to have some input if you if you wanted some. Um, but other than that, if um, there's a motion to adopt the agenda, that would be great. I, I'm to sorry, a, a, a point of order um, with regarding the posting of the meetings. I I guess part of the that discussion would be why they're not being posted to town meeting TV as well. I'm I'm not clear as to why it's being limited to board docs. Okay, well that's fine. That's that's fine, Mila. We can get to that. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So with with just that additional um, item that would just simply we can just simply label that um, recording of meetings. Um, uh, I would welcome an, a motion to adopt the agenda. Move to adopt the agenda as amended. Thank you. And seconded. Um, all those in favor of the agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Um, so we have an agenda. Um, the next item is the minutes of the um, February 8th, 2022 Public Safety uh, Committee. Have both of you had a chance to look them over? Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, if, if, if there are any amendments, now is the time. Otherwise, um, a motion to approve would be great. Move to approve. Second. Great, uh, motion and move to, uh, motion to approve and second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, so those are great, thanks, Jared. Um, and then we have the public forum. Um, I don't know. Uh, we do have we do have a couple members of the. Uh, I believe actually the people that are members of the public forum that are at, listed as attendees are um, are members of the press. So um, imagine they probably are not here to speak. If you are and wish to be recognized, by all means, please raise your hand. Um, there are no other members of the public uh so i think we can move on from that um if there are people that come between now and then jared and they want to speak you know i i'll try to monitor it but please let me know if you see something um so we can thanks so we'll close the public forum um the item that i had mentioned which is um just before the discussion of the cna report um it was brought to um, it was brought to our attention this afternoon that the recordings that we have of the January eleventh, twenty um, fifth, the first of February, and eighth of February, um, there were Zoom recordings of these meetings, and we have those recordings, um, and just wanted to ask uh, the committee members, you know, if you how you feel about you know, what you would like to do with those. We can post those on board docs. We can also, I'm not really sure what the mechanism is to get them on town meeting TV. Um, maybe other people know how that works, but if that was what our wish was, um, then we could, could simply you know, ask staff to take care of that. 
I'm fine with anything being posted. All right, is that okay with you, Jane? Yeah, I mean, I don't really see why we why we shouldn't. <laughs> so right, yeah. right. I mean, I don't, I don't either. But um, you know, it came to our attention this afternoon that they hadn't been posted, and you know, I'd rather the three of us just have the opportunity to talk about it. If anyone has any concerns, that we should, we you know, as a committee, we make we can make that decision. So I don't know, Jared. Do you know what the process is? And then we'll get, and then we'll get to Milo. It, um, do you know what the process is for doing that? In terms of posting it to board docs, I think we should be able to. So currently the way that we're recording these Zoom meetings is, well, we're using the city attorney's account and it's saved onto the iCloud. I don't know how much space our account can hold. Um, so I, in, and when that discussion came up earlier today, when Milo posed the email before we addressed it, I did do a little background hunting to find out, do other committees post the um, recordings? Some do, some don't, as it's not required by the open meetings law. We have to have minutes of the meetings, which we do have. Um, but I can figure that out. I think it might take just continuing to ask a, a few more questions and maybe Lori knows better because of the council and your regularly posted meetings through YouTube and everything else. But I can definitely get the links up on board docs without issue. And I'm sure we can figure out how to connect with other sources of distribution if we want to. It seems to me the um, police commission, or at least the meetings that you had of the joint committee, Zariah, those were all posted. I think the meeting, you know, the the recordings of the meetings were posted. Um, I don't know what the mechanics are. Um, Milo, go ahead. Uh, yes, yeah, so to your point, uh, the public safety meetings have been posted to town meeting TV. So that's why I'm surprised that we have to have this discussion. I would think, and it would be important that we would also post these to town meeting um, TV and that there seems to have been some sort of breakdown because this has been the practice. I'm not, I'm not asking for something new. Um, this has been the practice and with something so important, we, I mean, I don't know how many people will look at it. I'm used to looking at all these committee and commission meetings and going back and reviewing certain parts. So I'm pretty skilled at finding these things. So I was pretty surprised not to find any of them posted. And that raises concerns for me. I don't want us to look like we're trying to hide information from the public. So we really should be endeavoring to find out what happened between the end of last year where the meetings were posted through December and we've suddenly stopped posting that. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I Honestly, I really don't know, um, but point well taken, and we will take care of that. So from this point forward, um, you know, once the once we know what the mechanism is, we will once the you know once we're able to do that physically and have the recording and can post it, it will be posted. I would imagine that that can be done fairly quickly. So, um, Jabu, did you have a did, go ahead? Yeah, I was just going to um, comment that it's, at least from what I've noticed, is that um, if time meeting TV is not at a meeting, um, it's generally not posted to it. So I wonder if, if it's just as simple as maybe like forwarding um, a copy of the file, the video of just the time meeting TV, they post it up there. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, we'll figure it out. And your point is well taken, Milo. There's this, these meetings are too important. And uh, we certainly don't want anyone to feel that we are. Um, not making them easily and readily available. So thanks for bringing it. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. Um, the uh, I think what we'll do is move into the recommendations. We um, I believe that we left off at um, what on this what on the spreadsheet is line forty one, and that would be. Um, Recommendation 1.32.1, 132.1. Um, and that is, well, actually, I think those were, we were talking about 
these things all to some degree at one time. And those were the um, victim wit uh, witness assistance, because I think there were several of them. Um, let's see here. Or no, actually, this one is about the updating the Directive 21.01, .01, which is the domestic violence response policy to describe um, the position and responsibilities. Um, and that would require amending 21.01. .01, and I don't know if the other ones related to that. It doesn't appear that that directive has been discussed um, yet. There appear to be pretty much across the board agreement that this is a priority and most people labeled it a priority two. Um, do not know how much work is involved with that. Um, would leave that either to the chief or um, Detective Byrne, perhaps, to tell us. Um, and Karen, um, if I can quick, because sure. we did discuss it, and I think we I did. didn't capture some of the discussion around it, because I think we did decide to, sorry, are we on 1.311? Yeah, line yeah, 41. Yes, so, yeah, so I think we had, based on some of the things that um, John had said, made it later, but I don't know that I captured the notes on it. Is, I think that was my fault, basically. I think we did discuss it. All right. So maybe we put that, maybe we put that into Q7. We don't have a seven yet. <laughs> I don't know. Does it the, the, are there of the of the working group or or a chief or others? Are there is there any um any comments on that? Or is, is that as a director of review, is that something? that people feel comfortable in waiting to what would then be uh, the third quarter of next year. Okay, so why don't we, why don't we, why don't we do that, Zariah? You're so good at doing this, <laughs> taking the, kind of filling, filling in those uh, lines, um, uh, rows or columns C and D. Um, the next couple of items are, um, uh, lines 42 through 50, I think, well, for the most part, are, um, are bargainable. Those are, and I'm not really sure, um, other than to categorize those and to prioritize them as a, as a working group, I don't know that there's a whole lot more we can do with them. Um, and I'm just wondering, Jared, what your what your opinion is as we go into some of these that involve bargaining, um, how you feel we we could approach those as a group. Sorry, I'm muting myself here. Um, okay. I, I as I think it's important that if you feel that things need to be expressed as it relates to the contract. And as we, I think, discussed in meetings prior to this, um, that we capture those notes. I don't know if it's easier for us to break that out into a separate spreadsheet of its own, like still leave it on the master matrix, but creating items that are specific to the contract negotiation, I think would be easier in terms of trying to transcribe that information to the interested parties, whether that's my office, HR, the mayor's office, et cetera. Okay, so on the ones that we had before um, that were union, um, so there were the, the bucket, there was a bucket of items that were training related, and then there was a bucket of items that are um, bargain, union related, union negotiation related. Um, maybe when we get through section one, maybe it would make sense to go through and, and, you know, and put those into two separate spreadsheets. Um, Cause it looks as though we will get through section one this evening and maybe have a little bit of time. Um, but I'm, I'm just wondering how 
other than other than going and prioritizing what more what more we can do and we can't there really are no next steps other than the fact that they're bargainable and this is our this is our recommendation as to what the priority is is that pretty much right yeah i think that that that's fair and right i mean i i think that it would be in the best interest of the committee to give as clear indication to those in the at the negotiating table how important it is for this to be included um you know ranking them the best they can um okay um um and okay it, so go ahead sure yeah if i can just maybe ask a question around that which is um to what extent i guess to what it like we just hired a new position that is supposed to review this footage to my knowledge and so i guess i'm wondering what the disagreement is and if we're just proposing an alternative process so would like to hear i guess from the department on the position that the council approved um last month is not a reviewer it is a person who merely redacts uh incidents that have been identified for that person um so uh, it's different than review the issue here is around the idea of random auditing and it has to do with the fact that that is not, it was, there was an agreement made between the union and uh, the department when the body cameras were put into effect, the first agency in the state to do this, treading new ground on, on really issues of officer privacy, issues of, uh, of the, the idea that you're being compelled to wear a device uh, that gathers evidence potentially against you um, and that had bargainable implications. Uh, it was not directly inserted into the contract. Instead, it was understood to be an agreement um, between, I believe, then Chief of Police Sherling and the then e-board of the union that this was going to be a component of it. And it was, at the time, a standard component in any number of agencies that was exploring, that, excuse me, that were exploring body cameras that randomized auditing was not going to be a component. Uh, so when I have a civilian, when I have a citizen complaint, I go to the body camera. When I have a use of force, particularly one that uh, upon review of the uh, written use of force narrative indicates that there may be uh, complications or a use of force that resulted in an injury, I go to the body camera. Um, certainly with regard to the redaction specialist, that uh, position will be going to body camera for specifically delineated instances uh, outlined by agreement between the police commission and the department. Um, and I can't remember what they are exactly, but they are basically uses of force where there's an injury, uses of force where tools are used, uh, that is, uh, you know, baton or a pepper spray, um, and then some others. Uh, but it's not all, and it's also not random. Um, so the, in both of those instances, uh, it, there is a prohibition on the notion of having random review. So I guess what that is, is if that is a priority for the administration, for the city council, for the police commission via the city council, um, then that would be something that we would you know i mean we would have we would have to work on together is that is that a is that a fair is that is that a fair uh, assessment of what the situation is i don't know who else, whoever wants to answer that <laughs> yes yeah um so i guess what the you know we've got one two three four five six seven eight, nine, we have nine, nine or so of these items right here. Um, a couple of them, I noticed that a couple of them, Oren had put, um, had said that they should really go into section seven. Um, and you'll forgive me, the spreadsheet is so long that I can't, 
can't remember now which ones they were. This was um, staffing and workload analysis. Section seven. Yeah, forty-one and and yeah, fifty. Yeah. Basically, basically anything to do with um staffing, I or a schedule, I thought would be more efficient to have in section seven. We're probably going to have a pretty in-depth conversation when we get to that. So to do in section one and then again to do in section seven, just for the purpose of time and efficiency, I thought it would be better saved to then. Okay. I'm 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 okay with that. I mean, just because just because CNA put them in section one doesn't mean that we couldn't discuss discuss them with the others. I mean, I don't I don't know what their specific rhyme or reason was to it, but does anyone have a concern with moving that those and we literally would we literally could move those lines just into section seven does anyone have any concerns about that or is there something i might be missing yeah i think that just because uh maybe i'm being unoptimistic but i would say that the sooner we can get any recommendations to on bargaining to folks that are coming out of this report. I mean, maybe somebody else is doing that analysis, but maybe not. I would hesitate to move anything that is bargaining. Not that I don't trust us to finish on time, but maybe I don't trust us to finish on time to later sections. Oh, Soraya, right. are you are you doubting that we're gonna get this done? <laughs> I um strongly agree with Zoraya. I cannot tell you how. I just live in fear that the bargainable items are going to fall through the cracks. Like someone's going to come up with some kind of reason why they weren't discussed. So we really have to make sure that these make it onto that list so that they make it into those conversations. So um, I wholeheartedly agree that um, we we just have to handle the bargainable first, even if we're just to say they're bargainable and they're going on the list and, and just to have that process. What is the acknowledgement that these have been re received to be discussed? I mean, I know we kind of went into that last week where it fell on the public safety committee, but I just, I just really had some deep concerns. I think a lot of people in the community have a lot of deep concerns because um, some of these uh, have been, mentioned numerous times by members of the community. So um, they're important. Thank you. All right. I mean, it would seem as though just in the interest of time that we try as best we can to, um, if we're going to have the, we're going to have the conversation so that we can get these items in the queue um, for the purposes of getting them in the queue and trying to prioritize um, by work of the committee that you know, on the items that we know we're probably going to have to, we're going to be discussing again at a later time, hopefully, you know, in, in about a month, um, that we just try to limit the conversation as best we can so we can get through them. Um, so, uh, and I, I, I certainly don't see the harm in, you know, in having that conversation. And then if we, if we need to, we have part of the conversation a little bit later. Um, by the way, I see that Jeff, um, has joined us. Jeff, thanks so much for, for being here. Um, are you able to hear us? Well, I hope, I'll, I'll hope, I'll hope so. Um, uh, so these are items going from line 42 to line 50. Um, starting with 42, um, Irrespective of the agreement or disagreement, which we can all respectfully have agreement or disagreement, it would be the idea of the working committee to come up with a way of prioritizing these items. And again, I mean, we'll try to have the conversation in some level of linear order so that we move on from one to the other. The first one being um, the one that we've just discussed. Are there... So the, the, the column where it says suggested timeline really doesn't apply in this case because it's a, it's a bargainable action. So it would more just simply be a conclusion. Um, if anyone has an opinion about how high a priority that would be from one items one, two, and three to no or no. I, that's number 42, correct? 
uh, this is line, yeah, line 42. Yes, it's recommendation. Unfortunately, these recommendations have these awful numbers. I just um, want to make sure we're like talking about the same ones and also yeah. make a note of what we want in the queue. Um, right. So, so that, I mean, and that's the other thing is that we've got, you know, we've got right in here, two, four, six, eight, nine of these. Um, mm -hmm. They can't all be one, you, you know, I mean, they could, but if you're looking at making inroads, it's hard to have them all be a priority one. So, so on this would go ahead. I was just going to say to like Good. just start the conversation. I mean, I personally think that one point three four point one should be a one. Um, that yeah, I mean, I think that's something that is quite a high priority. Um, but just you know, happy to obviously talk about that and talk through that. But um, okay, this is one point three four point one. Mm -hmm. So the. That you're asking, you're mentioning Jane. Now, do you have a do you have a feeling about one point three three point one? Also, yeah, also a priority. Yep. Sorry, both of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I know. I know, Milo. You had, you've spent a fair amount of time on these. I know you got your hand raised. Go go ahead. Um, I just want to say one of the reasons that I support one point three three point one is that. In trying to determine and get to the root causes of the racial disparities that continue in the department, looking at some of this footage, um, having that reviewed by supervisors might be helpful um, in trying to make those determinations. Is this- I don't um, know if I, I have to look to see what I gave it. Yeah, I ended up giving it a, a two um, because I can't give everything a one, but I, I agree that it's something that we need to do. So when you say, and you say you gave it a two, you gave it a two when in fact, and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit hampered by the fact that I can't look at the whole spreadsheet at one time. Were the other items that go from lines, you know, 42 to 50, were, the, were there others, Milo, that were a one for you? Um, I'm actually trying to scoot over to the columns that I'm in. I want to say I had some that I said I needed more information on, and then I had a lot of them just, I didn't prioritize because they're related to the contract. So it's like we have to get past uh, the bargaining issues related to some of these. Um, but I agree with them. I think I need to hide some of the columns so that I can see my responses better because there were a couple that I had tagged as... I needed more information on, and then I had others that were tagged the contract. Like, can we really prioritize something at this time that has to go through uh, contractual negotiations? So one thing that one thing that I was struck by in this, and I, I don't know how others feel, is that the lines 45 through 50 were all bargainable actions. Those were those were um those were items that um, that the the chief agreed with. Um, they were also items that um, they were also items forty forty five um, that with the exception of 50, so 45, 46, 47, 48, and 49 were items that were, that the chief had said adding to the, adding to the renegotiation and that the BPOA's response was either needs to be negotiated, not opposed to the conversation, or there was no comment. So I'm feeling as though those are items that maybe we as a committee say great we move those on and those are those are you know ones we i mean we seem to all agree with them um 
And then the question would be, are, are they important enough to us to assign them a one or a two? I mean, at this point, if, if there is agreement, I, I can't imagine why we would want them to be a three. Go ahead. Um, yeah, sorry, just wanted to add to the debate. We haven't been giving things priorities um, on numbers as a group. We've only been putting a timeline on it based on right. the priorities and a, and a comment. So I can add those priorities. If we're saying just for the bargainable ones, we want to have priorities between them, like as a tool to folks, we can do that, but it's not something we've done historically. So right. yeah, we'd have to sort of, instead of suggested timeline, I guess I guess maybe we need another column. On. <laughs> I can just add it to the notes. I can add it to I can just put a high, medium, and low priority in the in the notes column for those ones. Um, but yeah, I think I agree that anything that has agreement on it to me is a higher priority for yeah. I mean, like the like 45 is the city should work with the BPOA to modify the retention period so the discipline records are maintained for far longer periods of time. Uh, it doesn't appear as though, well, the BPOA's response was, um, uh, was that that, you know, was not opposed to having the conversation, but this can have an unintended side effect, which would hold back which could hold back the the department. Um, so I mean, I mean, not to say that they're in complete agreement, but there is some level of agreement that there is that that conversation could can happen. Um, same thing with the working with the BPOA to revise the promotion to senior officer to five years. Um, uh, the work with personnel to determine more appropriate compensation for FTO officers to ensure probationary officers receive, are, are receiving high quality informed training. Um, the reviewing how many times the department has used the above um, delegation function assigning new officers with an officer who has had no FTO training. I mean, these are not, these don't appear to be particularly controversial. Um, seems like we could all agree. Is that fair to say? Looking at all these little boxes and it doesn't appear as though anyone's disagreeing. So I, so that's a good, that's good. Um, why don't we, I, I mean, I'm, I guess what I'm just trying to do is focus our time on the things that are, 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 are potentially where we might have disagreement. So, um, so to conclude, just to make sure that I, I put, high priority on all of them. I put a high priority for changing the contract as there seems to be a consensus to change. And then I noted on 1.36.1, BPA noted concerns for unintended consequences. And on 1.41.1, uh, BPOA disagrees. Yeah, um, well, they dis, they, yeah, I think it was also the fact, and I don't know, Oren is on here so he can correct me, but I think it was, disagree this is a more suitable topic for section seven so i'm not sure or and if you mean that you disagree with where it is or you just disagree with it um i don't know if you have anything else you want to add to that uh let me just catch up just double check sure. on, on the this right is one line, uh, this is line 50. um yeah we i at the minute i'm i'm our membership would, would disagree with changing our schedule. Um, our, our schedule is one of the more attractive parts of being a, a, a Barnes and Police uh, are working for the department. It's, it's very predictable. Um, you know, and it's, it's very attractive. A lot of, a lot of people are here. They, they say when we polled them um, last year, you know, one of the reasons they stay at the department is because of the schedule. Um, yeah, we work one month we have weekends on one month we have weekends off. And once you get up in seniority, you can really put, you can foresee, your schedule for a long time. Um, we like to keep our schedule and in a retention crisis that we're in right now, it's, I'm not sure how beneficial it will be to the city, um, apart from like deploying officers um, whenever they want. Uh, the amount of officers you could potentially lose by changing the schedule could be, could be pretty detrimental to an already struggling department. Okay. 
All right. Th thanks for clarifying. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that that I would say what you're, what you're saying, Soraya, is correct. Um, you know, for for reasons of schedule, it for for reasons that Orange just listed, that BPOA is not is not in favor. Um, as far as the the only other items that remain that are bargainable are lines 42, 43, and 44. And that would be a question of how important this working group feels those items are in a way of saying high priority, I don't know, moderate priority and low priority perhaps. And I know Jane, you had already said you thought that 33 um, was a high priority or 34, I'm sorry, 34. Yeah. Okay, were there any, are there any other opinions about um, those three? Um, I guess not knowing, I don't feel like I know enough about 35 to know if that's something that's necessary or not. Um, but then I, I would say 33 is high priority. Um, you know, one thing that I would be interested in knowing is on item 33, um, I don't know, either to, um, either to the chief or um, Orrin, if you know, are there other police departments that do this kind of um do this kind of work that that have these um you know random reviews by shift either at a, at end of a week or end of a month or at end of each shift um do you know if there are other departments that do that uh i think atlanta does it um there's a guy who left atlanta pd and was here for a little bit of time, he mentioned, uh, it wasn't even random audits, it was like complete audits, all their videos are watched by supervised by a, a unit that was dedicated to it. They're a much bigger department, obviously. Are you in New York City has something similar? But I, again, as, as uh, Detective Byrne mentions, it has to do with, you know, New York City has a quality assurance division that I believe has a total of 150 staff. So is the reason that is part of the reason that you are, you know, I mean, percent what is part of the reason that you disagree, just simply the tremendous commitment of time, or is that a significant reason that you you would disagree with that? Don't know if there's an opinion about that or if you'd rather not say, um, which is, I it, is that question for me, um, Dancer or the chief? If you have, if, go ahead or for the chief, either one. Um, and was, when the body cameras were first introduced, they were, you know, the purpose of them was to aid in, I'm just reading this directly from the directive, uh, aid in documenting emergency response, crime scenes, evidence preservation, and enhancing police transparency. Transparency. Um, there, a supervisor has a very broad scope, and they want to look at um, an officer's body camera. I think I believe the word is if they have cause to look at a body camera, they they can do so. Uh, for us, the the body cameras were, were were never, you know, intended to be, you know, some sort of device that surveils employees and monitors their performance to make sure that we're operating at peak performance. Um, if yeah, so that's that's kind of where 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 we're at. We yeah, we 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 don't feel like we should be monitored um, randomly at all times to ensure ensure our our uh, performance is, is you know meeting the maximum standards. If if a supervisor suspects uh, any sort of wrongdoing or there's a complaint or a use of force, um, they they can review our body cameras, which we don't object to. But yeah, the the thoughts of just randomly being audited. Just you know, just to make sure our we're we're, we're performing to a standard, um, we're against. 
Um, can I just hop in real quick? Um, thank you for that, Oren. Um, I feel like I wouldn't look at it like an audit by any means. Um, and I'm not saying that maybe every shift needs to be like looked at, but I do like, if we really believe that there is this like quality and standard being followed through and throughout, um, I feel like it wouldn't be something that people should be worried about or just super conscious of. So I, I don't know. I'm just curious that curious about like, what, like why this isn't something to at least be considered. Um, and maybe the chief could speak to that, but you know. And maybe I just, if I can I'm just, if yeah. I can add a question to James, because I, I guess I hear the reason and that makes sense to me. Um, how often do supervisors do, how often are supervisors paired with um, their direct reports in terms of like, how often are they seeing them? Because I mean, I would say like in a typical job, you know, your supervisor isn't watching over you all the time, but you know when your supervisor is with you and they're kind of watching you do your job. Um, I guess how often are they paired and driving or riding with them or whatever? Uh, I don't think supervisors are ever paired with, with officers. I've okay. never been paired with a supervisor in seven years. But they routinely respond to calls with officers. They observe officers in the field routinely. And they okay. go, uh, they, they, they respond to jobs, to, to incidents together. So the idea of riding with them, no. But the idea of getting to the scene at the same time, being on the scene at the same time, working with one another in a give and take relationship where the supervisor has final supervisory authority, but uh, often defers to officers based on their areas of expertise, that happens all the time, every single day. And I, Oren, please, you know, agree or disagree. Yeah, I'd say almost every time I've arrested somebody, uh, well, a lot of the time I've arrested somebody, at the very least, uh, a supervisor uh, is present at the uh, scene of any domestic, you know, by directive, a supervisor has to respond. So yeah, in, in the way the, the chief has put it out there, yeah, supervisors and officers work hand in hand constantly. Um, but yeah, sorry, I, I, I misunderstood um, your point, Councillor. When, when it comes to like riding in the vehicle, yeah, that very rarely happens. But yeah, no, we're they're they're looking at they're looking at our work all the time. Whenever we have a probable an affidavit of probable cause or anything, when we arrest somebody, supervisors review all that paperwork. Every single bit of paperwork that we put up, a supervisor reviews. Um, yeah, so there's yeah there. I would say that uh, supervisors are you know monitoring our quality of work uh, a lot. And then I don't know if, I mean, not to, I don't know. I don't know. I just know this, I guess, from like regular employment practices, but you know, the idea of maybe random isn't the right word, but maybe, you know, like reviewing things with, if there's a review process in terms of like, oh, like today we're going to look at, you know, one of your interactions and talk through it or something like that. If that's something that happens regularly if it's not something that is already incorporated in some other way in the review process. Because um, I see the random review, it's just like, we're just gonna find a 10 minute period and evaluate you based on that, that being an uncomfortable employee place to be. Yeah, I mean, that would that would make sense to me. I mean, it's sort you know, I, I, and I don't know if in policing, and I would be interested to know like in policing, I mean, certainly in some fields, um, you know, they'll, they'll take a case, um, you know, a medical case, a legal case, a, a something, and they will review that and critique, well, what could they have done differently? What, um, you know, what changes could they have made to make that a better outcome or just simply discussing it to learn from it? Does that, does that happen? And certain circumstances, it does. I am. Um, I teach Taser. Uh, teach officers how to use their Taser properly, and uh, I would do my best every year. We don't have a lot of Taser deployments in the first place, but you know, when Taser deployments do occur, we would usually take the deployments, talk about what was good, what could have been done better. Um, so that that happens when it comes to like those specific use of forces. Um, yeah. Uh, I, if, you know, I'm not a supervisor, so I don't know what happens, uh, if an officer is, is, is seen as, um, 
making a mistake or something like that. If those are, are counseled, I, I've been counseled before um, for when I was, you know, more junior for a complaint that came in, you know, I didn't do anything wrong, but my supervisor, you know, looked at my video, gave me advice on how I could do better in the future. So, you know, those conversations have happened with me across the board. I can't, I, 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 I can't say uh, with any certainty, but I know some of those interactions do happen. Okay. Th thank you. Thanks for, thanks for, uh, thanks for assisting us with, with, uh, with your experience. Um, Milo, did you have something you wanted to add? Yes. Um, I just want to say that uh, with conversations that the police commissioners have with Nicole and um, just from some guest speakers that we've had and uh, just uh, my own research that this is certainly something that is done in police departments. Um, and one of the reasons that I would like to see our department uh, use this is because I think it's important to spot check interactions. I, I think, you know, it's hard because we don't have a strategy in place to address racial disparities. Um, I think that this is something that could be part of that strategy in terms of looking at data by officer and um, if the supervisors of, of certain officers who have high discrepancies are reviewing some of their interactions, they might be able to better coach them. So that's why I support this. Thank you. Um, okay, so um, I mean, I... I'll just speak for myself. I think that I think there is a, a limit to what is what is reasonable that is random. Um, and I and I so I'm not sure that I necessarily agree with random. Um, I, I'm I, I I do I would I mean if if I were gonna like full wholeheartedly support this, I would be interested in knowing what exactly we're talking about in terms of um, the depth of uh, the time that it would take. Um, and if you're doing this certainly at the end of each shift or at a minimum at the end of each week, um, given all the other, um, all the other demands on officers and supervisors time, how much would be involved with that? Um, uh, so I'm not really sure, you know, I, I, I don't know enough, um, myself, um, you know, and would probably say that this would be, um, for me, uh, you know, a moderate priority and not a high one. I don't know how others feel. And we don't have to reach consensus. We can say what, what it is and that there was a mixed opinion here and some felt it was a high priority and some felt that it wasn't, which is fine. And I've tried to record in the notes um, the concerns, like an alternative suggestion that there were mixed opinions. Milos, I'm going back and putting in your notes what you just said. So I'm trying to capture everybody's feedback, but. Thank you so much. Um, are there others who have, you know, have an opinion, um, you know, in terms of what you would feel, you know, and basically we're talking about 33, 34 and 35. But we'll start with 33 um, as far as that being a priority, a high, moderate, or low priority. And we know where Milo is. Um, I've just said I think it's more of a moderate priority. I think Jane said it's more of a high priority. Um, don't know, Jabu, if you've got a... And then I think, I, I think we may have lost Isaac. Um, and Hannah's not here. Jeff, um, if you have an opinion, would be happy to hear it too. Otherwise, we can we can move on um, to um, thirty four. This was something that there was. Um, uh, uh, this is this is for those who are maybe driving. This is the BP BPD should continue to follow the best practice operational procedures outlined in Directive 14.1 and update the directive as new national best practices are released. 
continually reviewing new best practices added to the Bureau of Justice Assistance Body Worn Camera Toolkit. Um, and I think there was, um, uh, I know Detective Byrne, you did not have an, a, you didn't have any notes on that. I don't know if that's something that you tend to agree with or find disagreement with. Uh, I, I, yeah, we don't don't have anything. We don't disagree with with that. Okay, so that could probably go into the same category as the other as the others. Um, and then the last one would be the contractual detective minimum should be renegotiated. Um, I know just in speaking for myself, I am I am not. I don't know enough. I don't know enough to be able to have an opinion about that. Maybe others do. So I think if that's the case, Zariah, we should probably just simply say that that working group did not feel they were, you know, knew enough to be able to have an opinion and be able to prioritize that. I, I, I can give why we um, would disagree with it if that's helpful. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, I, 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 I struggled with the report on this. Um, I, yeah, it was, when I was reading the report, I don't really understand how CNA suggests, you know, when this was being uh, spoke about in more detail in 7.31, I don't really understand how they suggest, they acknowledge they didn't fully understand the amount of work that our detectives do, but they still at the same time recommended that fewer detectives could probably do it. Um, even their, their 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 breakdown, I didn't understand how they came up to that um, conclusion. We, we we have ten detectives, but not all those detectives are investigating the same type of crime. So when they're talking about the detectives could uh, be reduced um, to as to as little as five, you know, we already we only have five detectives who uh, investigate general crime. There, there there's five of us. That's already kind of happening. Um, then we have three or you know, two detectives dedicated to uh, investigating drug crimes. And then we have two detectives dedicated to investigating um, kind of crimes of a more sexual nature. Um, so, yeah, I'm not again, I, I, I don't really know if the I don't really know if the authors of the report actually spoke to a, a supervisor of the you know detective bureau to understand the work that we do. But I don't think um we're already we're already working pretty hard over in dsp we could do with more detectives kind of cutting us down uh in numbers definitely wouldn't be um a, a, a great idea and we, we we we'd oppose it in contract negotiations Oren, could you um advise what the current minimum threshold is i believe it's 10. okay uh, there have to be 10 10 people in dsp we have nine at the minute one is on military leave he's, he, he's been away for a while but the minimum is 10. Great. So I agree with Karen's point then of maybe I would say referring this to HR and looking at workloads. Yeah. And I was just going to, I, I was going to, yeah, <laughs> from an HR perspective, you know, especially given current conditions, we wouldn't recommend that. That's not something my office would recommend reducing the staff and the, um, the detectives just from an, purely from a staffing standpoint. And I think that um, I would agree, uh, just to based on some conversations that I had with uh, former DC Sullivan um, about the number of detectives um, in the department and the different things that various detectives did. Um, so I, I guess I, I would uh, agree with leaving this particular threshold where it is. Okay. Um, so, um, we are going to need to go back and just, and just pick out the things that were union issues. I, I think at one point we were trying to get some of those in yellow, but it seems as though we sort of have gotten a little bit, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we kept with that. So we're probably going to have to go back. We only have 
uh, two, four, six, seven that are left in section one. And once we finish those um, uh, provided we, sh and we should have time, um, I think it probably would make sense for us to try um, while it's still reasonably fresh in our mind to go back and do, just do that as a group and make sure that we haven't missed anything. Cause I do agree um, with Milo that we wanna make sure that certainly anything that is a bargainable action that we have, we have secured that in a place where we know where it is and can then move forward with that. Um, as well as the training items and the, the last items in section one going from line 51 to 57 are all training related. Um, and um, thank you very much uh, to the chief for putting these into that kind of bucket so that we know exactly what we're looking at here. Um, there are three items that are um, in the very, at the, uh, the first three, there appear to be a fair amount of agreement with a couple of the others. So, um, yeah. So uh, the first one is uh, BPD should design a structured systematic curriculum with full lesson plans, learning objectives and goals, as well as training aids and visual materials, such as PowerPoint slides and hands-on activities among others. Um, and, um, so I guess, I guess what I would be interested in knowing if there is someone who can offer an, an opinion about, um, that being largely in place, um, whether or not that, um, that is somehow documented, um, and, is, and I, I think a few of us had also said this, whether or not that is um, something that can be materials that could be accessed and reviewed if somebody wanted to do so. Um, is that something that is available? Um, and I guess I don't know if who, uh, who there is that might wanna be, who could speak to whether or not that curriculum is, um, you know, is a is is comprehensive and structured in a way that would meet with the, you know, the the wishes of many people in Burlington. Go, go ahead, Zoraya. Yeah, just wanted to note that for the some of the other training things in our conclusion, we noted and I've referred back to it is next steps by August 1st BPD with review of police commission creates overview of training availability priorities as foundation for a strategic training plan. So just want to note that that's where our discussions on other training things ended. Okay, well, I mean, we, you know, I mean, we could, we can if we wanted, um, put that into the other training programs that remain. Um, I don't know if there are, I'm just looking ahead to see, um, uh, if there are others, I mean, I know like the chief and yours, you had put, you had gotten up to section three. I was just looking to see if in the sections that are much smaller, um, whether or not there are other training items. Um, maybe under the staffing under section seven, there might be, I don't know. Um, those do not do not appear to be training related. Um, so maybe these are the training related items. Um, so I guess the question would be, if we were to do that for the people that are here that are uh, members of the police commission, if you could, you know, how you, how you feel about that. I mean, we, you know, obviously we could go and say the same thing on these items, items 51 through 57, and then also adding on the items that um, the BPD response is that they are done. The question would be um, to understand what done means and, you know, um, whether or not that is something that needs to be reviewed or if it's something that is done in the sense that, you know, it 
I mean, it, 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 training does, isn't usually done. Training is something that you continue to do. And whether or not what your thoughts are is, you know, on the on the commission about how that could be, um, you know, monitored or reviewed on an annual basis, or whether or not it should be more, how you would feel about those items fifty one through fifty seven, um, basically being in that same training bucket that Soraya had referenced. or if we should prioritize them. And we could, we could put those in the suggested timeline, um, particularly the ones that are um, not either not yet underway or underway. Um, like for example, the, um, uh, there are a few, let's see here, um, like item number 53 about the implicit bias, bias training courses aligned with national best practices. Um, that would be a consider by BP, uh, the BPD response um, and that REIB is delivering the training in a few months. I'm assuming that means, you know, shortly or now. Um, and then what those next steps would be um, as an ongoing, as something ongoing, because that, that would be where my concern would be is what is the ongoing work that's being done? Right. And I, I guess I would ask, I'm just a little bit confused about uh, where you're thinking the police commission comes in. Um, we have been recommending in the strongest possible terms that the department needs to work on the continued and increasing racial disparities in some areas and needs to take a look at the training. Now, we've never gotten the documentation despite, you know, we went through this before. We don't know what happened to the documentation. We just know we haven't seen what's done, been done in the past. Um, what's done in the past doesn't look like it's been effective. So we definitely need to have a plan for the future. And I would love to see the police commission advise of what that plan is and have some input in it based on the training that we're receiving from NACOL and um, we also had a speaker recently um, who spoke to the commission about failures of different types of bias training that has occurred in the past and how you know now is the time that there are, are changes being made moving forward. So what will happen moving forward? When will it happen? And who will be responsible to, to make sure to verify that it indeed has happened. So from outside the department, um, is it going to be HR? Is it going to be the mayor's office? Because we, we have this one major thing holding back the department on so many levels that we need to address, um, but we're going to need uh, follow up. We're going we're going to need some type of follow up that's not just going to be within the department. It's going to be outside the department for accountability purposes. Well, I guess my my concern would also be item uh, one point four two point three. Um, I, you know, I. I I am a little concerned about um, this being something that I think the vast majority of us agree with um, and would like to see move forward. And yet, you know, it's put on as a consider. Um, and I don't know if um, the, um, I'm just not sure. I mean, I don't know enough about the um, I don't know enough about the training um, with REIB to know if that training would be meeting this requirement, this this recommendation. Um, don't know if um, Director Green can respond to that, or um, if there are others who feel they could respond to that. Before you continue, uh, Counselor, that should be an agree, not a consider. That's why it's a quick win. 
So uh, it's a quick win there because I believe most of those things are already in, in play. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, uh, okay. All right. So that should have been it's nothing for you to be sorry about. That's how, I mean, yes, this is the, you know, I know that nobody changed that column. That's how, that's how the column was sent. It's an error on my part. Oh, oh okay. All right. Okay. So then I guess what we can do is um, for the master, whatever the master is that's listed online, we can you know, yeah, okay. Wonderful. Boy, I don't know. I got somebody who's like four steps ahead of me here. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So that, that, that's great. I mean, I think the, um, uh, and that is, that is training that will address the racial disparities that, um, um, that many have referenced. Um, and I, I assume that that's, that will also be speaking to that as well. Is that true chief? Um, I, again, I, I think actually Director Green would be a better answer for that. I do what what our next steps are is what it says there that REIB is currently delivering training to everybody in the city, uh, and I believe that uh, shift workers such as police officers, firefighters, and certain DPW staff are supposed to start getting it. I thought when I made this when I made this matrix in I don't know October uh, immediately after the CNA report was public. Um, it was supposed to have started much sooner. So I'm not quite certain what the status is of that, uh, but that's one thing. We had a meeting this morning about our benchmark uh, system and the degree to which that's tracking our training and being able to actually do some of the, the components that it talks about with regard to um, you know, ensuring that the, the, the training is updated, et cetera. Um, so that's the nature of that response. Okay. All right. So that is, um, let's see, training curriculum schedules, um, and 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 just as long as I as long as I have you, uh, Chief, on number four one point four two point one, where it talks about re reviewing training curriculum structure and scheduling and materials, to um, yearly to ensure training trainings are are meeting national best practices. Um, was that something that you meant to say consider? Or in that particular instance, it? I think I, I I think I maybe meant consider simply because we're I felt we're already doing it. So consider it in the sense of do we dig farther into something that we're already doing for this? That's also why it's a two and not a quick win. But I, I I'm not certain what consider meant in that instance, especially since the the note indicates that it's really already happening. Right, and it would when the same thing be true of one point four two point one about the structure and systematic curriculum with full lesson plan, et cetera? Is it if you say it's largely in Again, place, yeah, then you yes. agree? And and right. I think that for example, you know, uh, Detective Byrne, uh, Detective Byrne has been an instructor for a very long time, and I think he can attest to the degree to which these things are are in place already, both uh, both row fifty one and row fifty two. Yeah, I am. I teach taser. I teach uh, procedures. I do. I teach um, the use of less lethal munitions. We um, we have lesson plans for all that. And um, the use of force guys, the same thing. We develop our lesson plans. We push it up to supervisors to review. And uh, yeah, we, we we do our best to, to to follow it. And the lesson plans are created off of um curriculum pushed down by you know whatever export experts or manufacturers. We're um. Whose information were 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 given to the officers? Um, I don't know how available that is to the general public, but the lesson plans and everything else are are, are created and stored on um, the department uh, servers. All right. So, um, well, go ahead. I um. So I guess some of my concerns would be, and this is very difficult because I can't discuss anything that has been discussed in executive sessions the police commissions had, but I'll just say in general, there have been some things that have come up recently where we've had questions about how often, um, like an officer may have initially been trained on something, but how often are periodic reviews done? Um, especially when it comes to uh, certain directives. Um, and then coming back to some of the inconsistency where we really don't know what's going on 
with the bias training. And I know I'm beaten. I, I know some of you don't like me still bringing it up, but it's, it's an issue that has continued to go unanswered. And so it's a major thorn in the overall training. Um, so I feel like that, that kind of interferes with saying that these other pieces are already being done because we have one piece that isn't as far as we know. Um, I would like, um, because we've mentioned Director Green a couple of times, I would like to direct Director Green to speak to what is scheduled for mm -hmm. the department with regards to upcoming training um, and what it would compri be comprised of. Is that possible? Sure, I think that would be. I think that would be great. Um, Director Green, are you are you are you able to speak to that? This would, I imagine, what Milo is concerned um, discussing specifically is line fifty three about the ensure that the quality of implicit bias training courses align with national best practices and continue to provide these trainings during basic officer training and uh, annual in service training and the BPA. BPD should ensure that the entire organization receives annual in-service training on implicit bias. Um, yeah, I I totally agree with that. I think that um, that the BPD definitely should do all of those things. Um, I will say that I am not, as far as I understand, the, the BPD will be trained by the city facilitators in trimester three, which will be uh, probably like late summer, early fall. Um, as of right now, they are not being trained. Um, and, and there's some scheduling stuff that has to go along with that, um, that will be worked through uh, the chief of staff and the chief of police. So they are not being trained by, based on specific course suggestions or training suggestions by REIB? They will be, um, but they are not currently, no. Uh, they will be trained on specific anti-racism, um, which I believe that um, Action Chief Murad is in right now with the rest of the department head group. Um, so he is seeing firsthand what those trainings are like. Um, the training to the police officers will be very similar, but there will be some additional focus on um, on police and, and anti-racism practices within police departments. Is there a way to get access to the material that's being covered? I or think we could do that. Um, Director Durfee, can we, is that something that we can do? You, you certainly are more than welcome to share it, Director Green, it's great material. Okay, well, there, there you have it. I can um, share that material with, with the group. And is there a reason that it's, is, is, it, is it purely scheduling that it's being pushed so far back, given the current concerns? It, that is my understanding. Um, but there was, there, was, there was pushback in general to the scheduling. I'm not going to say that that was directly from the, the BPD, but just overall throughout the city. So, but as far as I understand from the administration, um, the BPD should be trained last because of scheduling. Last because yes. of scheduling. Yes. Um, okay, I just wanna go on a record that I'm sorry to hear that um, because I think they have one of the greatest needs. Um, regarding this so, other pushback, you got my ears, uh, my spidey sense is tingling. My spidey sense has been tingling all day <laughs> about things, <laughs> but... Um, I'm, you know, in this climate that we're we're living in, where, uh, you know, we see some of the laws that are being passed in in certain states. Well, you can't, you know, you can't hurt people's feelings, and you can't say certain words. And um, I hate to think that that's um, occurring here, but it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. Um, I I would. I would just say to um, Director Durfee that I think that this is something that needs to be accelerated 
if possible, because there is definitely oh, let me, need. Yeah, let me, let me explain a couple things. Um, number one, um, the REIB is autonomous from human resources. Um, Taisha, Director Green's done a great job um, uh, holding it down. Um, she, you know, this, this is, you know, what happened with it, with the scheduling, you know, we could, we could all talk all day about scheduling. One thing I can assure you though, uh, Commissioner Grant is that um, prior to this training, and I think the chief could probably um, talk more about this. There was um, some anti-racist training done, <clears throat> actually a pretty, pretty significant module of anti-racist training done by um, a black facilitator, black female facilitator, which, really kind of satisfied, you know, that, you know, I think I, I agree with you, Commissioner, is that that training is so important. It has to be ongoing. It has to happen all the time. Um, Director Green has been, you know, talking about that for a long time. It's not one and done. So um, I guess my, my sort of, you know, I won't call it a spidey sense, but just sort of <laughs> my desire to see anti-racism training um, in all police departments across the country. Um, I was pretty, I, I was not satisfied because again, it's ongoing, but I think um, the training that the, the department just had um, with this facilitator, I believe, um, I can't remember her name, but um, it, was, it was significant and I have re reviewed those materials. And have we reviewed who was able to attend that? Because I know there was some question and not being able to get documentation to show um, which officers were able to receive that training and, and who was not able to receive that training? The trainer's name was Trusty Loving and every single sworn officer in the department and uh, went through that training uh, and some civilians as well. Um, the, uh, she spent 25 years in the US Navy and worked with law enforcement agencies and major corporations on racial equity. And rather than conducting one-off lectures, uh, like, like previous trainings had been, she actually provided a series of, of 70 to 90 minute customizable training sessions over the course of six months. And she would do it with each group individually. So she did it with the day shift and then with the evening shift and then with the midnight shift. So each module was repeated. And then with the detectives, each module was repeated, I believe uh, a total of seven times uh, in order to get both sides of the schedule for the three shifts and the detectives. Um, and the modules were, uh, you know, about bias, about uh, those who don't look like you, about why are you in this part of town. Um, they were uh, interactive uh, and conducted because of the pandemic via Zoom, but officers went in with the people they work with, which was very important, and on their time schedules as well. Um, but since, uh, since 2005, we have conducted dozens of training modules around reducing bias and building cultural competency. Um, those include diversity and cultural awareness and Arab and Muslim cultural awareness and bias-free policing and cultural diversity and non-bias police stops and racial data collection and transgender issues and a class even as early as 2007 on white privilege and in 2008 community engagement and cross-cultural communication and uh, Again, uh, you know, diversity and inclusion, um, multicultural competence. These are are listed and have been presented to the public on a number of occasions. Um, that that is these lists: police minority relations, Nepali culture and language, anti bias training for law enforcement. Now, not all of those were conducted by everybody or attended by everybody in the department, but the training sessions that I implemented uh, in 2021 were. Okay, I guess that's one of the things that I've been curious for some time now in terms of, because I have gotten lists of trainings, but it's never been really clear as to um, who's attended them. And as we uh, just spoke to the importance of um, certain trainings being ongoing, and I guess that's what I'm trying to, to get a handle on. Um, I guess this is the issue that I... I really care a lot about uh, just because of, of some of the things that I'm seeing that are occurring and some of the things that I'm hearing um, in the community. And I, 
I guess I'll leave my concerns where they're, I, I won't go on any more about it because I just feel that it might be better just to continue in um, another uh, full police commission meeting just so we can continue to go through these through these items. But I, I, I would like to see because of all the issues about did we get documentation, did we not get documentation, how are we tracking and making sure that we do have this ongoing and that we are consistently tracking um, who's attending and that the information is uh, readily available to uh, to the people that that need to see it because we've just had this back and forth about is the information available is it not available um, and I just get concerned because I don't think that's a good look um, thank you um, so I have a I have a question um, uh, I guess for the chief and that is. Um, when it comes to training, um, and I, I don't attend enough police commission meetings to know, um, is, there, is there a point in the year, you know, when, you know, in most commissions, there are certain things that are done once a year or once a quarter, and they're just recurring items. Um, is there a discussion with the commission that, um, or is, yeah, is there, is there a discussion that talks about um, training. I mean, to me, the items 51 through 57, I, I don't think that we can ever really put something as done. I, I think that you agree with it and it's ongoing. Um, but I think being able to show um, the commission and show the, the community that this work is being done, um, not that it isn't, but showing that it is being done is there some mechanism for being able to do that in a way that would, um, you know, could be done on a, I don't know, semi-annual or annual basis or um, so that these training items were reviewed um, publicly and you could say there's X number of officers and there's X number that have participated in each of these trainings. Is that something that could be done yes we uh we track pretty much every piece of training with sign-in sheets and sign-off sheets every single piece of it is tracked we have a, a coordinator for that role um and uh, again as i mentioned earlier we, we've implemented a new system called benchmark uh that is uh, was designed at least in part to track use of force which we have not yet been able to transition our valcor use of force entries to benchmark but we've already used benchmark to begin tracking training, begin tracking uh, different kinds of performance, and also um, uh, the, the reviews that supervisors do of, of officers. Um, so insofar as our training, uh, we do track that, and we could make that a, you know, a, a semi-annual or annual part of a report to the um, police commission. It has been a component of previous presentations to the public, uh, both to the commission and to the council, but happy to make that something that we go back to and you know, make a, a component of, of a given uh, session, let's say June's session or May's session or whichever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it, you know, once you once you institutionalize it in the sense that you're doing it twice a year or whatever, then people expect it, they know it. Um, and it has, you know, as opposed to doing it when it gets done. Um, Milo, did you want to add something? I would respectfully disagree with the chief on when, when we've tried to get, uh, the police commission's tried to get certain information around uh, training, especially in terms of who's trained when, we haven't gotten uh, complete information. I know because I, I personally have been asking for this information going back to uh, the committee to review policing policies. And then it just got put on the back burner while CNA uh, information was being provided to CNA during their review. And then we have the you know, whole mystery around missing documents. But I do want to concentrate on going further uh, forward. And the more information that we can get going forward uh, will be greatly appreciated. Um, thank you. 
Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, we we need to we just need to move forward and um, and and take what we have in front of us. So um, I think um, I think Zariah, when it comes to items fifty one through fifty seven, that um, uh, you know it these are largely in place um, at least uh, you know at least a. It, at least um, according to next steps by um, by the chief, um, the the question is you know ongoing ongoing monitoring um, and so I think having having the having one uh, commission meeting um, where or two commission meetings a year where I don't know in January and June or um, I guess we'll leave that to the commission um, that that would be uh, that that would be presented semi-annually with a, you know, um, I mean, we do this when we talk about commission appointments, we ask for attendance records. Um, and um, I think the same thing, it sounds like the same thing could be done here. So if that was added as a committee conclusion and then whatever you present chief to the, to the commission, um, keeping in mind that um, counselors have a lot thrown at them and um, it would be helpful if perhaps that was also done in terms of a communication, perhaps once a year to the to the um, to the council, so that we're also kept abreast of what the training trainings are that BPD officers are going through. Would that does that seem reasonable? Yes. Okay. Um, does that seem reasonable to the commission and other members of the working group? Uh, yes, and that's fine with me as long absolutely. as it happens. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, Zariah, I don't know. I didn't really say that very well. Do you have no, any I, idea what I just said? Yeah. So I think it took some of the other places where we had talked about like making a strategic plan and put it here just because at one point. 2.1 because it seemed the most relevant and then said C 1.42.1 on the other things and so I kept the by August so let me know if this captures what folks are thinking by August 1st BPC will create a review um well that doesn't make any sense BPD will create an overview of training with review by PC and HR on availability, priorities, and attendance as a foundation for a strategic training plan. There is a lot of disagreement on what is available and in place to the police commission, CNA, ETC, and what is easily available. Recommend twice annual meetings on training updates with attendance and a more to the police commission and a more high level summary once a year to counselors. That sounds great. Uh, you definitely said that better than I said that, and I think I was the one that said it. So that's pretty impressive. Um, uh, <laughs> um, uh, how does that sound to everyone? Okay, so um, I think what we should try to do, um, we've reached a major milestone. We have gotten to the end of section one. Um, the question would be going um, and let's see, um, I'm trying to find where there were, I feel like there were at the last meeting, which would have started at around line 20 something, that there are a few things that are also bargainable. And one of them, um, okay, so one of them, it seems like, um, I don't know how to best do this. Um, I don't know, um, Jared, you had suggested this, or maybe we can just work off of this spreadsheet. It looks like item on line 22, uh, that that would be, that would be a bargain item. What do you think? We 
guess if the question is to me, I mean, and and Chief may be better to answer this, but in terms of creating this division of the department, again, it depends on what level of employee is going to fall within that division because not all employees, officers, et cetera, are BPOA members. So um, maybe yes, we're, I, yeah, maybe we're in the wrong line. I'm talking about oh, the one with the one about the sorry. this is uh, uh, let me go by the recommendation. This would be 1.18.2. Oh, okay, sorry, I was one down. Sorry. And I know there were there was a few things, Milo. You you had specifically spoken to a few, not wanting to see those fall, you know. And I can't remember. Um, we were going to go back and go through things that were. Um, all right, there was a couple right here. Let's see. Um, so highlighted, I have ahead. one point one eight point two, one point one eight point three. One point three three. Hmm. Do you have those in yellow? I have those in yellow. Yes. Okay. All right. Great. One point three three point one. One point three five point one. And then all these other ones. Oh, I don't I have the other ones. Night. But we just did those tonight. Yeah. One. I just didn't highlight them. One point three six point one to one point. Four one point one. Okay. Um, okay. All right. So, and then as far as the ones that were training related, those I think actually the chief put those in as a, either a director of review or training. Um, and I don't. Let's see. All right. Here's one that is one point two six point one. So I don't know if you want to maybe on that one use a different color. And Karen, just so we don't get too far over, but Jibu does have his hand up too. I don't oh, know to oh, I'm up. sorry. I'm sitting here oh. so focused on the spreadsheet. Go, go ahead. On thank you. It's, it's all good. It was merely just to answer the question of uh, the bargainable ones. Um, I think I wrote that here. Seventeen point one through 19.1 or possibly bargain, bargainable things. And then we've already touched on the other bargainable stuff, 33.1 and 35.1 through 41.1. Okay. Sorry, Jabu, you said 17.1? Uh, yes, 17.1, that is, sorry. Uh, that's one, uh, it's like- Yeah, the director review. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So those are the others. Um, and for the training one, Karen, I don't, so for the other training ones, I didn't color code them, although I can right now, it just says to see 1.42.1. 1.42. All right. So the one that I see that is, I think is 1.26.1. That's line 35. Um, and and then the others, the ones that we just discussed tonight. Mm -hmm. Those are the items that are training related. I thought, I feel like there were more of them, but maybe there weren't. I thought there were, but what about, um, let's see. Uh, I don't know, I felt like there were more of them. Okay, maybe, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, I'll look at this when I go offline and see if there were others that I'm, oh, and here's one, uh, 1.6.2. 1. Yep, got that one. Yeah, and that might be, maybe that's it. Um, um, and 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so it would look as though there's two, uh, three, four, five, 
There's actually 10 that are training related and then two, four, six, eight, uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, about 12 of them that are bargaining related. So maybe the way to approach the, the bargaining ones would be um, uh, Maybe the one the way to do that would be to break those up into one spreadsheet themselves and um, you know, and have that as one separate group um, that we would then be able to then uh, then forward that as the can as the opinion of the working group um, with input from the BPOA and BPD um, going forward. Is that? I don't know, Director Jurfee, you're on. How, how would you how would you propose that we be able to bring that forward, or what do you think is the best way for us to bring this forward? Just as you recited, Councillor, that to me <clears throat> is the best way. Um, I don't know if the chief or um, <clears throat> detective, <laughs> excuse me, um, it, or and if you have anything to say about that, but I think just as just as it makes complete sense just as you recited you know i think that's it that outlines a good process for it and sorry Woo! i'm i you caught me eating <laughs> i do eat <laughs> yeah i mean does that I, i'd be interested to hear what other folks think anybody police sounds like a good idea then <laughs> okay all right we will do that because I know that was certainly a concern that those yes. were, and we want to make sure that those are. So I think, I think actually, Karen, maybe we'll do that. We'll get that to you, you yes. know, this week. Yes, um, that'd be great. So that it's it's done. Um, there there may be others that are involved in the CNA report. We've only gotten through section one, but right. as we say, I mean, as we get them, I think that's what we'll probably end up doing is you know, as we find them, we will bring them forward and it's an ongoing process as you know, anyway. So that's right. And um, I have a folder just for those things, just for, just for this report. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, it would seem as though we're probably in a good place. It's seven fifteen, seven fourteen. 14. Um, just wanted to mention a couple of things for the public as well as for the members of the committee. So next, um, next week is, um, next week is the 22nd, Tuesday is the 22nd. Um, I, <laughs> I had tried very hard to lay out a timeline that would get us to the end of March, having finished this report and, uh, um, I know you have a police commission meeting that night and we had sort of tried to find a middle ground of when to meet. Uh, as it turns out, you're welcome to meet whenever you'd like because we have a council meeting that night because of President's Day. So, um, you know, I apologize for not even realizing that at the time. Um, and it means that we can't, that the Public Safety Committee may, can't meet that evening. Um, and we're assuming also that there's going to be a board of finance meeting that night, so we can't meet earlier. Um, that also brings us to the 1st of March, which we had agreed would not be a night that we could meet because it's town meeting day. Um, so um, I think what we will try to do, and actually, if you can let it let me know, is that is the police commission meeting in March, is that also on the 22nd? uh off the top of my head yes we they're kind of always scheduled for the fourth tuesday of the month and i believe that is the 22nd so yeah yes all right so we have we have the 8th the 15th the 22nd and 29th that gives us four meetings um i'll try to get out a um a plan for how we can approach that you know getting the rest of the report done fortunately we are through the most challenging um, section. Um, so uh, the, um, with the exception of the 22nd, we'll work on the 22nd as far as the time 
but we'll, let's, you know, if we can continue on the 8th at 530 and then um, just for the working group and members of BPOA, as well as others, um, if between now and the, uh, the 8th of March, um, we can work on sections two, um, maybe two and three, that will, that should get us, um, you know, we, we, that should, that should probably put us in a pretty good place for the 8th of March. Um, uh, were there, was there anything else that, um, anyone wanted to mention before we, uh, we adjourn? I just want to point a clarification. Would you be sending an email to the members who are not here tonight to, or would you like me to do that? In terms of to, to, to do- communicate that we'll be off for the next two weeks and that we're hoping to get to two and three by the 8th of March. So if they can get me their notes and yep. whatnot. I'll do, I'll do that, Jerry. Okay, I'll take, thank I'll you so much. I'll take care of that, sure. Um, uh, yeah, that, well, the section two is, is, is not that long and section three, um, not to get too far ahead, but section three was covered to some degree in the resolution that the public safety committee brought forward, you know, some time ago, um, we can certainly still discuss it, but there are two, four, there are only six recommendations in section three. So, and we probably can discuss a, a number of them together. So that shouldn't take too, too long, um, but we'll see how, we, how far we get on the 8th. Um, if there's nothing else, um, then uh, we, can, we can adjourn the meeting at 718. And uh, thank you all so, so very much for your, your attention and your time and your input. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. See everybody. Have a great evening. Thanks Thank so much. You. Bye.